Hey YouTubers, this is Noah from Elementor. Today I'll be teaching you about our fantastic post widget. With this widget, you could display on your page any, and I repeat any, custom post type in numerous layouts. A very important and practical widget. So let's get started. So first we'll search for the widget and drag it in. And once it's dragged into place, you will see the content tab and the style tab. In the content area, you have full control over the layout and the query of the widgets. So first in the layout area, we have the columns where you could set the amount of columns displayed in the widget. You could choose between one and six. So say I choose two, two columns or four, etc. Next, we have post count where you could set the amount, the exact amount of posts to be displayed in the widget. So if I insert, for instance, one, you will see only one post or 20, you'll see 20 posts, etc. Then we have image position where you could set the position of the image in relative to the contents. So we have top as in above the contents, left, right, or none at all. Then we have the image size, where you could set the size of the image from thumbnail to full. And we have image ratio, where you could set here the exact ratio of the images displayed in the widget. And then we have the image width, where you could set the exact width of the images displayed in the widget. Now note that you could set it in pixels or percentage. And next we have the title and excerpt setting for the widgets. So for title, you could set whether to show it or hide it by clicking here. And if you choose to show it, you have the following setting, title HTML tag, where you could set the HTML tag for the title as a heading, div span or regular text. And same goes for the excerpt. You could choose whether to show it or hide it by clicking here. And if you choose to show it, you have the following setting excerpt length, where you could set the exact amount of words that will be displayed in the widgets excerpt. So the default is set as 25. I could set it as five or 10. See how it changes, etc. Now, next we have the metadata where here you could select the metadata to be displayed in the widgets. A click on this field here opens the list of options. So you have author, date, time, or comments. So you could add it here. And you could remove it by clicking here. And next you have the separator between where you could insert here the exact separator that you want displayed between the metadata right here. So say I only give it one slash, you'll see here how it changes. And next we have the read more setting where you could also choose whether to show it or hide it by clicking here. And if you choose to show it, you have the following setting, read more text where you could insert the exact text that will be displayed right here in the read more area of the widget. So say, for example, I delete this. See how it changes here. All right, so those were the layout settings for the widgets. We'll move on to the query settings of the widgets. So first here we have the source where you could select the source from which the widget will display the content. So we have posts, pages, products, galleries, and manual selection, which we'll go over soon. So after the source setting, we have the filter settings. So first we have categories. I could filter the posts displayed by categories. For instance, if I have a fashion category in my website and I insert fashion, See how only the fashion posts are displayed. And same goes for tags. For instance, if I have a devices tag on my website and I insert devices, see how only the devices posts are displayed in the widget. 
Aside for these two filters, we also have the authors filter, which is extremely helpful for those of you building a website with many authors and want to display only a specific author's posts. So a click here opens the list of authors on my website. Now I'll just go back and show you the source manual selection option. Here, as it sounds, I could manually insert the exact post or posts that I want to display. So for example, I have a post called tips for vacation. So if I insert this, it should automatically be displayed in the list and I click on it. See how only the tips for vacation post is displayed. So that was the manual selection source option. Next, we have the advanced options. So here we have order by, where you could set the order in which they're displayed as in date, title, menu order, or randomized. And then we have the order where you could set as ascending or descending. And you have offset where you could insert the amount of posts to be skipped over. For instance, if you insert two, the widget will begin its display starting from the third post. Now that we went over all the content options for the post widget, we'll head over to the style area. So here we have control over the layout, image, and content style options in the widget. In the layout, we have first the column gap, where you could set the exact gap between the columns in the widget. And we have row gap, where you could set the exact gap between the rows in the widget. And we have alignment, where you could set the alignment of the content in the widget as left, center, or right. Next, we have the image style options, where you could set the border radius as pixels or percentage. Say we give it 100 or 50, etc. And we have spacing where you could set the exact spacing between the image and the content in the widget. So those were the layout and image style options. Next for the content style options, we have the title color where you could set the color of the titles and topography, which you could set to activate it. And if you do, you have the standard topography options, such as size, font family, weight, transform style, line height, and letter spacing. After topography, we have the title spacing, where you could set the space between the title and the rest of the contents. Then we have the meta color, where you could set the color of the meta data right here, say pink. And we have the meta separator color, where you could set the separator's color. And topography as well, which opens for you the topography settings. And meta spacing to set the spacing between the metadata and the rest of the content. Then we have the excerpt color. We could set the color of the excerpt and its topography and excerpt spacing between the excerpt and the read more text. And last but not least, we have the read more color. You could set the color of the read more and its topography as well. So those were the style options for the post widget. And now that we went over the widgets basics, I'll just show you a few quick examples for neat displays you could set with it. So we'll scroll down. And in this first section here, we have a post widget. Now here, first for the image width, I set a width of say 50 or 49. And for style image, I set the border radius as 100 pixels, which made it completely rounded. So say I were to set it as 50, it would be a bit rounded, but I set it as 100. 
And for the layout in the style options, for alignment, I set it as center. Unlike left or right, I centerized it. And for the next section, we have here a really nice looking section with a grid-like display of the post widget. So how did we do this? In the content area layout, we set the columns as three, post count also as three, and the image ratio, we played around with it a bit, as you could see. An image width, we gave it full width, all right? And we played a bit around with the colors and topography of the content itself. And the section, we gave it a nice background color. And in this last section, we have a more list display for the widget. And here we set the columns as two while the post count is four. For the image position, we set it as left. As you could see, instead of top, we set it as left. And image size thumbnail. Now image ratio, we also played around a bit with it. And we gave it an image width as well. So as you can see, this widget enables you to creatively add custom post types to your page with a special touch and display. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos and tutorials, subscribe our YouTube channel or visit us at docs.elementor.com.